so excited to be here with you guys today and to share with you my brand new book. It's finally here. If you've been following along for a little while, you may have learned that or seen that it was delayed um, for a really long time on one of those ships out off the coast in Los Angeles, um, like a lot of other things in this country right now. Um, super frustrating. So this was supposed to be released back in November and yesterday was the official release date. So I'm really happy that it's finally here and in my hands and that I get to share it with all of you. So excited about that. So today I just want to share with you a really fun project that um, you can do with probably you have all the supplies at home or most of them or you can make do with things you do have at home to make this work. Um, so, well, first of all, my book is called Science, Art, and Drawing Games for Kids. Got a drip of water on it. Um, and it is a combination of science and art. And we, in our house, really love science and we really love art. And so it's a, it's a perfect combo for me and I was thrilled to have the chance to do this book. If you haven't also seen my first book, this is the math art one, so this is kind of a sequel, um, second to it, and this one has been doing awesome, and I'm so excited to have the chance to do this second one. So today, the project I'm going to show you guys is oil and water painting. Now, this is in the book. If you have your book already, if you pre-ordered it, you should have had it delivered to you yesterday. Um, if you are just ordering it, they're coming within a couple of days, but this is in the book on page 86 and 7. You'll find the project there, and it has all the instructions uh, if you want to pull out the book and follow along, or if you want to do it later with kids or with students, however you're using this. And it's in the section, so I'll tell you a little about what we've got going on in the book. Um, there's several different areas. We cover energy and motion, electricity and magnetism, living science, chemical reactions, and color and light. And this one is under the chemical reaction section and um, we're going to talk about how oil and water don't mix. So right at, at the beginning of each project are some little scientific descriptions of you know how these tie in together and the science behind them. And so this one talks about the word immiscible. So oil and water are immiscible which means that they cannot mix. And we know that when you try to mix salad dressing or other things like that you can see that oil and water will not mix together. And so we're gonna use that principle to make some really cool artwork. And you'll see some of it here behind me. These are ones, these are actually the ones that are in the book that I've saved. Um, but we're doing some more today. So here's a couple and they just turn out so fun and so pretty. And something you can do with them afterwards is to make them into a little greeting card or a thank you card and um, use them to send to friends and family. And they're just, they're just so pretty and so fun. And it's really, really easy to do. So, so some, some supplies you're going to need today. Um, you can come in. This is my little buddy Burton. And he's going to check on the phone for me to make sure that everything is going smoothly. Is my head all in it? Now it, it is. Oh no, was I out all that time? Sorry guys. Okay, so I have here just a plastic tub full of water. And there is some oil in it, but I'm going to show you how we put the oil in. We have um, just a little eyedropper. If you don't have one of these, it's totally fine. You don't have to, whoops. But it's helpful to get the drops in there. So you'll want to use this little dropper or a spoon. If you don't have a dropper, that's fine too. So we just squeeze up some oil and put drops of oil into the, to the tub of water. And you want different sizes of drops. So when you squeeze it in, you can do little drip droplets or you can do big you stay in one spot to get bigger drops of oil and that'll give you a variety of shapes and texture on your paintings as you make them. So just get a whole bunch in there. If you're doing it with a spoon, you can just kind of pour it in and you can swirl it around in there to make different shapes and textures as well. The oil will, will clump together in sections around and um, give you a whole bunch of different textures on your paper. The other things you're going to need probably have enough oil in there now, is some thick paper. I'm using today watercolor paper, and I just cut this in half. Um, that's the size of these ones that I've done. I just think they're a good size for this project. You can do them smaller. I have some even littler ones here too. Um, just depending on what your purpose is, you can even do a full sheet of paper. But the watercolor paper works best 
from my experience. You could also do a cardstock or try it with regular paper. It'll just be really soggy when it gets wet. But this one works best because it really absorbs the liquids well. And I'll show you just real quick. This is one I just did a minute ago, a few minutes ago. It's almost dry now. But for this one, I did a smaller square and I used blue and black ink on this one. I thought it turned out kind of cool. So then also you'll need some kind of coloring or liquid coloring. These are liquid watercolors. I love them. They're so fun to do a lot of different projects with. I use them a few different times in my book. So they're a fun one to have on hand and they last a really long time. You could do it with regular watercolors or also with um, just liquid food coloring would work well as also. Um, I like these because they're just such a concentrated color and they, um, they just give really vibrant colors when you do your art. Hey, Burton, is, you, um, is it showing the table still as you tilted it? Um, just want to make sure they can see what's happening down here too. Yeah. Got to get my head and the table in, so I'll just try and squat a little. It's okay. <laughs> All right, so what you do, we've got the oil in there. So then you're going to just take a piece of paper and you're going to just set it on top of the water in here. And what's going to happen is the oil is going to stick to the paper and the water is, is going to kind of run off. So you just kind of set it right on top here. You don't want to dunk it all the way under. Just place it right on top and let it soak up oil and then pull it off. And you can see the little droplets of oil on the paper. Now I want to kind of get it in more places. So I'm going to give it one more dunk so that this top part gets some oil on it. I'm going to just give it one more little dunk here and make sure that we get it in a few places more. I just like having a lot of it on there. Does that work? Okay, so we've got a lot of oil and water in there. You want to run off as much of the liquid as you can. And then you can see I've got this pan here and I just put paper towels on it to help absorb some of the mess because this is a little messy. I'm gonna move the book out of the way. I keep jerking on it. All right, so next you want to choose your colors. What color should we do in this one? Um, colors. see, two. red and yellow. Red and yellow, good choices. His favorite color is orange, so that doesn't surprise me that he chose red and yellow. All right, so with this, if you're doing it with regular watercolor paints, it will work, but you have to get them really, really wet. Because as you'll see, you just want to drip the color all over this. And it's going to swirl and run sort of all over the place. Hey, Mom, can I zoom up? Is there a way to... Uh, I think you can once it's already live. Okay. But thank you for... Um, you could, if you want to pick it up, and just hold it over for a second so they can actually see yeah. it really well. That would be awesome. So I've done a bunch of drips of red. Ooh, that was a big splatter of red everywhere. And now I'm going to add some yellow to the mix. I'm going to push this down a little. It always sort of swells up, but it flattens as it dries. So now I'm going to add the yellow, and that'll give us some cool color swirls. Now what I like to do after is just pick it up and sort of swirl it around a little bit, especially when you've got two colors that mix really well. And you can make some really neat designs. So just hold it like that and you see all the places where the oil is, the color is not going because they're watercolor paints so they also do not mix with the oil. So there we go for that one. I'm going to do one more so you can see what some different ones look like. That one has a lot of oil on it. Oh look what I just did. I just splattered all over all my other paper. <laughs> That's all right. We'll use the back side. Okay, I'm going to start a new one here. And come over the top of the water so they can see. Just don't drop my phone in there. <laughs> so I'm just going to dunk this again right into there. And then pull it out so you don't want it to go all the way under. And there's the oil and the water on there. Um, this one has really, really big splotches of oil. So it's going to have less color because all the oily spots won't attract color. I'm going to do purple on this one. Sometimes when these bottles and open, they spray as they open. Let's see, in blue? Yeah. Actually, yeah, so blue. Blue or red? I'm going to do blue. Blue. We already did a red one. We did. Thanks for helping. Yeah. 
This is my, Burton's my 11 year old son. He's always my awesome helper. All right. So let's try a little swirling again and it's just running right over those oily spots. That looks really cool. It does look really cool, doesn't it? It just sort of sits on top. All right. I'm gonna pop out back up into the stand now and I'll just talk again for a minute. Thanks, Burton. Yep. So I'm gonna show you guys a little closer some of the finished ones. As they dry, um, here's a little bit closer. How's that look at the screen there? They just look really awesome as they dry. Kind of bubbly. Um, and just swirls colors. This one I used red, blue, and purple, I think, or maybe it just made the purple. I'm not sure, but anyway, they just turn out really neat and then you can do what you want with them. You can make them into cards. You can hang them and frame them, whatever you would really like to do best with them. And they're so much fun. So that's super simple and tons of fun and a really easy craft that you can put together. It does get a bit messy, but you can contain it pretty well in a pan except for my splatters everywhere. Um, I hope that you guys had fun joining me today and I hope that you will take a chance to get your copy today if you haven't already ordered it. Um, these will be so awesome for any school or homeschool setting where you're teaching math or art or if your kids just really love crafting. There's some really cool activities in here. Check out my video about the book and it shows you even, even more fun projects that we've done. And you guys are gonna love it. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful, what is it, Wednesday. Bye-bye.